This week on the show, we have RT Lalwani, who found her perfect match on season three of the hit Netflix series, Indian Matchmaking. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that people may dislike your audacity to aim high. Have the audacity regardless. The reality is when you have high standards or are highly ambitious, there may be people around you that are intimidated or dislike your ambition to strive high and to want more for yourself. Many times their feeling of dislike of your ambition is a reflection of the person's inability to aim high themselves. So your ambition reminds them of what they feel they are deep down missing out on by settling for the status quo. The reality is we were all put on this earth to thrive, learn, grow, and become the best versions of ourselves. So why not shoot for the stars and have the audacity to aim high in all areas of your life? Anyone that is successful or blazed a trail first had to have the audacity to dare to dream even before they achieve success. Make your mission today to have the audacity to think big and dream big. As Benjamin Disraeli quotes, success is the child of audacity. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. I saw a clip that you guys got married at a Costco where it all began, right? That you guys met at a Costco. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't actually get married. Um, okay. we, we kind of just talked to, you know, the fans really wanted us to see a Costco wedding. Um, Costco became a big part of my story, my journey. I truly do love Costco, maybe not as excessively as it sounds like I do, um, <laughs> but I do. And so, you know what, we we took this leap of trying to make some, some content of getting married at Costco or having a wedding there because that's what people have been asking for. Um, and let me tell you, it was probably the most embarrassing thing because we picked <laughs> A weekend it was so crowded we were getting looks left and right people were like what is going on I some people were supportive some people were not um, there was a lady that worked there that wanted to catch my bouquet which was super oh, wow. cute <laughs> but yeah we didn't get married there I still need my my full Indian wedding but we we had fun filming that wardrobe provided by Le Chateau Next up on the show, we have Arti Lalwani, who stars in season two and three of the hit Netflix series, Indian Matchmaking. If I were to describe myself, I would say, desperate, please help. <laughs> Matchmaking is a job that will never be finished. Hi, we are just busy, busy, busy. Funny guys win. This is why Pete Davidson wins. I want you in on me. I've never opened up with anybody. So whom are you going to meet first? Archie, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Thanks for being here. I'm actually a fan of the show. I watched all the seasons and I liked you particularly. So that's why I wanted to have you on the show and kind of talk about your journey. So let's talk about it. What made you want to take the leap of faith and find a matchmaker? Yeah, so I actually started this process early 2021 mm -hmm. um, and I was very single. I was living in a city where I felt like I had gone through all the men and I've dated everyone and I saw them on an app and I was just so tired of it. Um, and it was one of the compromises I actually made with my dad was that, you know, I would uh, give dating, you know, Indian men another shot. And so when this opportunity came up with working with Seema Auntie, I had never done it before. My parents had an arranged marriage. They're used to working with the matchmakers. So I thought it would be a good experience. Mm -hmm. And were you nervous at all knowing that your whole journey and story would be kind of documented on Netflix? Or was this something you were excited about? Um, so as you said, I saw the show. I was kind of a fan uh, as well. And I was just one of those it was just one of those opportunities where i was like okay let's do it and then throughout the the filming process um i truly forgot that there were cameras i forgot there were mics which you know ended up being kind of a hard thing to go through when you start becoming very comfortable with the camera and the mic and you forget that you say certain things um so yeah it was just a very it was harder to watch it back than go through the experience yeah, and how was your experience? I have to ask. 
I thought it was a great experience. Um, working with Seema was, um, it was perfectly fine. I did all her dates that she suggested and it was all great. The only time that I had an issue um, was really when Seema Auntie was telling me that I needed to marry someone because there was an 80% match and I yeah. don't know where that percentage came from, nor did I agree, nor was there a connection and did I feel like I was going to marry someone based on that um, and then we got into a bit of an argument because you know I feel like she doesn't understand the concept of um, an independent woman living in America that provides on their own um, and wanting certain aspects of that and that's kind of where we got into it. I feel if, if I was on the show, I would be the exact same way because I'm very non-traditional. And that's what I liked about you, that you're non-traditional and, you know, you stick to your standards uh, with Seema. You were like, no, this is what I want and that's it. <laughs> How do you think kind of sticking to your standards was your biggest asset when finding love? Yeah, I, I preach very heavily self-love. Um, it's something that has taken a long time for me to go through. Um, and when I feel like you love yourself, you can say no to any Joe Schmo that comes at you. You can absolutely demand what you want. Um, and when you feel like you're in a really good place with yourself and you know what you're looking for and what you're willing to put up with, I think the opportunities come and it's easier for you to say no to the people that are not right for you that end up being toxic in your life that drag on for years and the right people that do enter you you immediately find attractive to yourself yeah absolutely and i know she did set up uh, quite a few dates um you know what was it like kind of keeping an open mind but also honoring yourself in the process because she was pretty set on the matches she made for you and also as you said like saying, well, you're only going to get a percentage of what you want, so you're going to have to deal with that. <laughs> yeah, so that that's the hardest part is because I did try um, all her matches. I went out with all three guys. I went out with them even, you know, more than she even knew. Um, and one of them, we did, we did try dating. It just was, we were not in the right place for each other. He was not the, he was not in a committed setting, which is what I wanted. Um, and so it was just not going to work out. Um, and unfortunately you do have to be aware that there are people that are, that know the show, that know what this entails and, and they're doing it for that aspect. When I came into this, I had truly pure intentions of finding a match. Um, and I went through so much during the filming process because it was two years that I grew even with that process. So it was it's hard to to fight back with with Seema and tell her what you want. But when you know what you want, it was it was easier to be like, nah, that's not working. <laughs> And it paid off. I mean, you found your match on your own, Jamal. You guys are such a great match. I love how supportive he is for, like to you and that he loves the strong woman. He likes you for who you are. So tell us about your journey on finding love with uh, Jamal. How did it start? Uh, <laughs> so Jamal, yeah, so um, he is phenomenal. And just like you said, he supports everything. He's not intimidated by me, by my success, by anything of it. Um, he supports it. In fact, I think we both support each other. I think we've both seen a huge growth in the fact that when we're together, we support our work, our, our, our you know, motivation to do more in this life. Um, and so we have a really good relationship. I think we realized that, um, we wanted to be together when we first started traveling. I think within the first two weeks of us dating, he was he was like, I wanna lock this down. And in order for us to even lock this down, he was like, I bought us plane tickets to go to Costa Rica. Um, it's in a couple months. I was like, we haven't even been dating as long <laughs> as this trip is coming up, which is so insane to think about, but um, he was committed. He was fully committed and I was, I love that aspect of it. Yeah, I did see a clip that you guys were bungee jumping. <laughs> and I feel like that's very similar to finding love is, you know, taking that leap. <laughs> How was that experience for you? Oh my God, it was so terrifying. It was my idea, Oh, okay. um, which does not make it any easier that I watched this guy and this guy is a, such a big dude that we're in, on this self-made bridge. And when he jumps over the whole little bridge that we're sitting on oh, no. tilts. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so it was so terrifying. He did it very instantly. I 
could not do it. It took me three minutes of just like talking to myself and doing it. Um, and then when I finally did it and we get back down, I think that's when I really realized that this was gonna be a great relationship for me because he was encouraging. He was supportive of things that I wanted to do that yeah. I was backing out of in the last minute. Um, and I just truly was like, okay, if we die in this rainforest, it's been a good life. It was great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not the best way to go, but I mean, you guys are so cute. And I, I saw a clip that you guys got married at a Costco where it all began, right? That you guys met at a Costco. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't actually get married. Um, okay. We, we kind of just talked the fans really wanted us to see a Costco wedding. Um, Costco became a big part of my story, my journey. I truly do love Costco, maybe not as excessively as it sounds like I do, um, <laughs> but I do. And so, you know what, we, we took this leap of trying to make some, some content of getting married at Costco or having a wedding there because that's what people have been asking for. Um, and let me tell you, it was probably the most embarrassing thing because we picked <laughs> a weekend. It was so crowded. We were getting looks left and right people were like what is going on I, some people were supportive some people were not um there was a lady that worked there that wanted to catch my bouquet which was super oh, wow. cute <laughs> but yeah we didn't get married there i still knew my my full indian wedding but we we had fun filming that costco better sponsor you honestly they really should and they should pay for your wedding because i mean that's a great advertisement and who doesn't like Costco. Right. <laughs> I feel like when you go there, you just keep buying things and you just, it, you stay there for hours. So I, I share your love for Costco there. <laughs> and Arcee, what did you learn about yourself in this whole process? Because I mean, I feel like it, it's quite the journey being on two seasons. Yeah. So I learned, so I went through um, a little bit of uh, grief right in the beginning of filming, um, which for me really re made me realize that I truly was invested in this process. I wanted to find someone. I My job will always be there. My work will always be there. I'm always gonna be replaceable in that field. But at the same time, I wanna live my life with someone. I don't wanna be alone watching you know, my mother go navigate now a life alone by herself was truly difficult. And I realized that I wanted to commit. Um, and so when I w went on these dates after dealing with all this grief and still dealing with it, um, I was very particular in what I was looking for. I was weeding out people left and right because I was so committed to what I was looking for. Um, and then I, I, I believe in manifestation and I really put it out into the universe about what I wanted. And I even said it at the mixer. I wanted to meet someone at a grocery store. I wanted to have that mundane sort of life. Um, and that's what I was looking for. And the fact that I somehow am able to manifest and will what I want has taught me that this journey is like your life is constantly moving on and there are very important things in this life and you have to make time for what's important absolutely and you know i wanted to actually send you a message on father's day to say that i'm sure your father would be so proud of you and that you know you took the leap you did things your way i didn't want to send it because i was like is this weird maybe i'll tell her in person <laughs> when we have our chat but i wanted to say that i'm sure he's so proud of you and you know how you followed your heart I think that's something that, you know, every parent aspires for their kids, right? And to be genuinely yeah. happy. So, yeah. And I want to talk about self-love. You talked about self-love and manifestation. Those are like two of my key words. <laughs> you mentioned manifestation or self-love. Talk to us about your self-love journey. And because I think that's so important before you find a partner is to really love yourself, value yourself and, you know, see yourself in a high regard, right? Absolutely. So um, as part of my job, uh, I was traveling um, every week for five years, which is a very difficult thing to do by yourself. Um, so I spent a lot of times uh, eating dinner by myself or sitting at a hotel bar or trying to, you know, just spend a lot more time with myself because there's nobody else around. I'm at a client site. I'm not going to spend time with them. Right. Um, so I really learned how to enjoy myself, how to travel, how to, you know, eat by myself, go to movies by myself, do things that I absolutely love. Um, and so one of the things before I met Jamal that I absolutely 
loved was me time. Um, and until I feel like you can kind of say that, it's hard to, to add someone else to your life because if you enjoy your time by yourself, like I still need it. I send Jamal to the gym. I don't even think I send him. I think he <laughs> goes to the gym by himself for like three hours a day. And I love that time. It's yeah. it's me time. And I still love that. And I love that if, if Jamal's not willing to go somewhere with me, I'm gonna do it by myself. Um, and that's when you don't rely on your partner. You're not you're not demanding them to do things for you. You can be independent all on your own and you can still add them to your life and they can still be part of it, but you don't need them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why you guys are such a great match because you both are independent and whole by yourselves. I mean, he has his gym and his stuff going on and his workouts and you have your own life and career and you guys just suit each other so well it's really cute and congratulations by the way i think that's really inspirational for everyone you know um to to know that you followed your heart and you found someone that you really wanted you didn't have to settle and i think that's one thing that's so important is like not settling you know life is too short to do that you just gotta take the leap and and stick to your guns so <laughs> absolutely do not settle it'll it, the right person will come along or they won't and you'll still be happy exactly and you know i created my platform to inspire to uplift to motivate and you know i want to ask you for someone that is struggling to find love they're putting themselves out there maybe they're shy maybe they're scared to put themselves out there and they're feeling discouraged what would you say to encourage them to you know take that leap so um, finding love, finding friendships as adults, finding any sort of relationships takes work. You have to put yourself out there. You have to do the work, whether that's on a dating app by yourself or trying to figure out your own internal issues to solve them. Um, if you're, if whatever it is, it takes work. So if you're not willing to put in the time and you're not willing to find and, and go on dates, I know how terrible it is to sit on dating apps and to go on these dates and they're terrible and you need breaks. Um, but at the same time, you're not going to find anyone by like doing that yourself. I would love to randomly meet someone at a grocery store. It was just not going to happen. So I made it happen the way that I wanted it to happen, which meant that I still had to put work in there. And that's my advice, whether you're scared or you're timid about doing it, go out there, do these quick 15 minute dates, have a drink, have a coffee with someone. If it's not working, leave no harm. I think that's great advice. RT, thank you so much for being on the show. I hope to see you again soon and I can't wait to see what else is in store for you. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me and I'm manifesting that everybody gets to see my wedding at some point. Very nice, yeah, I'm excited to see it. <laughs> Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.